What's up, fellas? Headed to an all-white party right now. And I just want to say, I hope you guys Saturday tonight, night, guys. I hope you guys are out living your lives, man. Not in the house swiping right, swiping left, fucking messaging 100 girls, man. Get outside, go outside, meet women outside in the real world, guys. All right? Now, I got an important question a guy had asked me, which I thought was a very damn good question. He asked me, how do you remain humble when your purpose starts taking off? All right, so bottom line, guys, is here's the situation with this. As you guys get more and more successful, no matter how much you come around people, no matter how nice you try to be, people, when they see you doing good, they always think you acting funny, all right? And so ain't nothing you can do going to be to satisfy people. That's the bottom line, guys, all right? When you, when your purpose starts taking off and shit like that, Riddell, anything less than you spending all day with somebody and picking people up, they gonna think you acting funny. That's just the bottom line, guys. If you go buy a new car, you acting funny. If you ain't over their house every day, you acting funny. Well, here's the, the fact of the matter, guys. <clears throat> when you on your purpose, you not gonna have time to see those people like you used to. That's just the bottom line. That's why that's why you're getting successful because you own your purpose. It ain't just fall from the sky. All right? Now, let's just hypothetically say you starting to feel yourself and shit like this. And here's the thing, guys. The thing about the purpose is to make you start feeling yourself. That's the thing. I just don't want you guys the difference between humble guys and confidence confidence and arrogant is the confident person just let everything speaks for themselves the arrogant person feel like they need to tell you how good they're doing all right guys when you're doing good and stuff like that you don't have to remind people and throw it in their face that okay now you're making uh 300 grand a year all right you don't you don't need to throw that in people's face they can just see it guys all right so you need to know that first and foremost you don't have to throw it in people's face if you're doing good, you're doing good, all right? Let everything speak for itself. You don't have to shove it in people's face. That's first and foremost, all right? So just know that, that you don't have to brag and let people know that you're doing good. It's New York, man. People are crazy tonight already. But uh, you don't have to let people know that you're doing good. Everything will speak for itself, all right? So if you're bragging on yourself, and stuff like that, you're gonna start to turn people off on you, all right? Just let everything speak, all right? But regardless of, guys, you cannot say nothing, you can be quiet, and when you start doing successful, you're always gonna seem arrogant, all right? It's just the bottom line, even if you're not bragging or nothing like that, that's just human nature, guys. Envy is something that just lives in pretty much almost everybody walking the fucking earth, guys, all right? That's just the way it is even your family even your closest family members it's just the way it is maybe you got like a maybe you and your mama real tight and maybe she's not jealous of you or nothing like that but outside of that man pretty much ex kind of expect everybody to be jealous for you you know I, as you guys get on your purpose and you start experiencing more and more success you know it would be happy if people would be happy for you but they're not all right and so they might classify you as arrogant or whatever don't worry about it guys just do what you do it's a reason why celebrities, you know, celebrities say all the time about their friends and stuff. They can't come around as much. They, the reason they can't come around is not that they're trying to act funny. The reason they don't come around as much is because they didn't get successful by fucking around. They got successful by working like a fucking animal. That's how it happens, guys. All right? So don't worry about that, guys. Just stay focused on your purpose and let the haters hate. All right, guys. I'll get back with you in a few. What's up, fellas? Back again. So I had a patron supporter want to know, he put on my last video, hey man, uh, you should stay grinding. Uh, you shouldn't start fucking with these hoes right now. You should, stay, you should stay grinding. And here's the thing with this, guys. This is how you know when you found your purpose. See, me dating whores was something that I was doing a lot of, all right? Before I joined YouTube, that's what something I was doing a lot of. 
And my clients that I was training, they say, you should be a dating coach. You do so much dating, you're sleeping with so many women. You should be a dating coach. And that's the thing, guys. I was doing a bunch of dates anyway. And so now I make money telling you guys my mistakes and what I've learned from doing all these dates. All right? That's the thing, guys. So my thing is to date and to constantly stay sharp. That's how you know when you found your purpose. When you do your hobby, what you love to do and get paid for it, that's when you know you found your purpose. You haven't found your purpose until you get to that point, all right? I'm getting paid now to date. Well, that was something I was doing you know, for free before I joined YouTube. Now I'm getting paid basically to date, all right? And so that's the thing, guys. <clears throat> that's when you know you found your purpose, all right? If you talk to a lot of sports athletes and things like that, <clears throat> One thing you constantly hear from all of them is they can't believe they get play, paid to play a game they love, all right? You hear that from a lot of athletes. LeBron, you heard that from Michael Jordan. A lot of times they can't believe they get paid to play a, a game that they love. And now I can't believe I get paid to date and sleep around. It's great, guys. So that's, what, that's the thing, guys. That's why I want you on your purpose, all right? It never feels like work, all right? Like right now, technically, I'm going to work, all right? I'm going to work because I might pick up some chicks in here and I'll tell you guys how I go or whatever the case. So technically, I'm going out to hang with my friends and technically, I'm going to fucking work. Just think about what I just said, guys. That, that's the beauty of being on your purpose. You can't believe you're fucking getting paid to do what you fucking love to do, all right? That's the thing, guys. So that's why I want you guys on your purpose. I don't got so many guys on their fucking purpose. I remember when I first joined the gym and I started training clients, I couldn't be believe that people was going to pay me $100 an hour to train them. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I cannot believe somebody's going to pay me to get them in shape. I used to do that shit for free just because I like to see people change their body around. Now I'm like, people going to pay me $100 to change their body around. All right, guys, so make sure you're on your purpose. Make sure you ain't doing some shit that just pays a lot of money and shit like that and it feels like a job. It just feel like a fucking hobby. You should be saying to yourself, when you head to work, you should be, I'm getting paid to fucking do this? All right, guys, so that's the thing, guys. Follow your passions, follow your purpose. It'll never feel like work. I'm headed to work right now, guys, and my work consists of looking at bad bitches and dating bad bitches. It's a great life, guys. I want you guys to join me. I want you guys, whatever. If you love race cars, do that shit. Figure out a way to make money doing that shit. All right? If you love video games, figure out a way to sit on your ass all day and play video games for four or five hours and make, up some, make some money off of it. That's the thing, guys. All right, guys. I'll get back with you in a few. What's up, fellas? So I just took old girl home, right? So yesterday I took a gamble. And what I mean by I took a gamble, guys, was I actually saw a girl two days in a row. Now, let me explain something to you guys. I don't advocate none of you guys doing that, all right? I'm seriously, seriously 
highly advanced with females. All right, seriously. So my skills are gonna be very far beyond yours. So what I can do, a lot of shit I can do and get away with, you won't be able to do it. But I'll break it down for you guys anyway. So basically what happened was, she hit me up yesterday, she got high interest. We went on the date, the first date was Friday. That was our first date, the girl I put on the video Friday. She hit me up Saturday around, around one o'clock or shit like that or whatever the case may be. Well, actually she texted me right around the time she thought I got home and said I had a good time, get you some rest or whatever the case after, about I, after I dropped off. So after I dropped off, which that was an indication right off the back, I knew she had high interest because she wanted me to pick up, right? And what I mean by high interest is when a girl let you want, to, want you to know where she stay at right off the back like that, guys, that's a good sign of high interest because when women feel like they might diss you or they're going to use you for a free dinner and shit like that, they don't want you to know where they stay at. So you guys need to know that right off the back, that if a girl, even if she don't have a car, that bitch will take Uber, that bitch will take a train, that bitch will take a fucking skateboard. When a girl know that, okay, this just going to be a, a free date, I really don't got no interest in this dude right here. She ain't finna have you come pick up. So the fact that she had me come pick up, when she could have very easily took an Uber to where we was meeting at, let me know right off the back. I said, okay, this girl got very high interest. Second thing that happened, guys, was she she asked me uh, what I had going on for Saturday night. Now here's the tricky thing, guys. I told her my friends invited me to an all-white party. Did y'all guys get that? My friends invited me to an all-white party. And she said, uh, was I gonna bring anybody because she wanted if she wanted to go, right? All right. Now, I had to weigh some scenarios in my head. Okay, you're gonna see a girl twice, two days in a row, but she asked you could she come, you didn't ask her, and two, my friends was going to uh, provide social proof. Do you guys get that? My friends was going to provide social proof. All right? So in other words, to let her know that I do have friends. On top of that, it's not like when she said, okay, well, can I come? Like I had nothing to do. You see what I'm saying, guys? The party provides social proof. All right? The party gave me status. All right, so, cause she asked me, is you doing anything tonight? Or whatever the case may be. And the party gave me social proof. So, it's, that's, that's what, that what was playing for me. I wanted her to see my social proof. And go, and, 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 and to point that out guys, if you guys have friends or something like that, and you out with a girl or something like that, so that's hypothetical, say you have friends and you out with a girl for a date or something and you know your friend's gonna be at this location, probably take your girl over there or the date over there, that's gonna raise her interest by you having friends, guys. All right, I've never bought that up in a video, but your friends provide social proof for you, all right? So, but that wasn't the only reason, guys. The biggest reason was I did the logistics of sex. I, I had the logistics of sex working for me. And what I mean by that, what I mean by I had the logistics of sex working for me, I simply mean, guys, that the location where we was meeting at was close by my house. It was 15 minutes away from my house. And I knew that when we leave the spot that it was gonna be around three o'clock in the morning. And I knew that her going way back home was not gonna be an option, all right? I weighed all that in. I said, you know what? I got the logistics of sex working for me because obviously going back to my crib, it's gonna be much easier than going way back to her crib in Queens. So I invited her out since she wanted to go out. I said, sure, you can come too. I'll tell my friend to get an extra ticket. So I had two things working for me. I had the logistics of sex, and I had my friends providing social proof, all right? Very important you guys know that. Now, thirdly, even though I had all that working for me, you still can lower girl attraction by seeing her twice, 
two days in a row, regardless, because it's kind of valid, it's validating, right? So what I had to do was I had to unvalidate it. So what I did was the whole night I kind of was like disinterested, very quiet, guys. I was very silent. And you know, that's nothing different, guys. I tell you guys to provide a masculine frame. So I'm pretty much silent on all of my dates. All right, I'm silent. Most of my dates, I'm silent. And girls are usually asking me, are you always this serious? Or are you always this quiet? And something like that. And I say, you know, I'm just, I just chill and observe. So guys, if you guys ever get that when you out with a girl and you maintaining your masculine frame and a girl says, are you always this quiet? Or are you always this serious? Just simply say, I'm more of an observant person. I just like to be, you know, shut the fuck up and I like to observe and listen. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I always say. And so I unvalidated her because I was quiet all night and periodically throughout the night I would see her looking over at me. I swear for God, guys, like the first 30 or 45 minutes, because she, she met me there, she met me, she called an Uber to me because the spot was only 10 or 15 minutes away from my house. So she called an Uber to me. I swear for God, after the initial greet, guys, we didn't hardly say two words to each other for the next 45 minutes. I swear for God, guys, we didn't hardly say nothing to each other for the next 45 minutes, all right? I unvalidated her, and eventually she came around. And you guys are gonna see that see that on these dates when you're in your masculine frame and you silent and you quiet and you the stoic type. You're gonna see these girls, from time to time, it's gonna get real quiet. Don't break quiet, let her break it, all right? And, and you think in your head, she gonna think you boring, right? In your head, you thinking like, Man, this girl gonna think I'm boring. I need to create conversation. But in actuality, you create an attraction. I want you guys to think back to high school. If I know some of you guys might still be in high school, but I want you guys to think back to high school. Who was the, the girls chasing? Was they chasing the loud mouth class clown or the loud mouth big show out of the school? Or was they pursuing the quiet guys who like stayed off to themselves, kind of mysterious? Or was they chasing the loud mouth, big mouth of the school, all right? That, the women pursue the quiet guys, all right? Y'all guys been taught to that women get bored and all this and that other shit. Yeah, if I don't create, if I ain't, you know, on a date, create a conversation. This ain't even talking about being a dancing monkey. This is just talking about just trying to keep conversation going. All right. And what ends up happening, guys, when you try to end up keeping this conversation going, what ends up happening is a lot of times you come off as a fucking cornball. All right. Because you end up just trying to say any fucking thing to keep the conversation going. Oh, uh, you got any pets? How long you had your pets? Uh, where you like to go? You just end up, you, you're trying to create so much fucking conversation that you end up just talking about any fucking stupid thing. You know how to drive? Where you got your driver's license? You just trying to do anything to keep the conversation going. In actuality, all you had to do was just shut the fuck up. All right? So that's the thing. And that's also a way of shit testing her. All right, guys? So the, for me to do that, guys, I had to unvalidate her. I gave her a little validation by inviting. It was, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a little give and take. My friends was going provi to provide social proof. And I had the logistics of sex working for me. But I had... To balance that with giving her validation of still wanting to see her two days in a row. Even though she asked me because she come, I didn't ask her. Alright? And so the thing with that guys is it was a gamble. The bottom line is it was a gamble, guys. It paid off. You know, I got my dick sucked all night and I fucked the shit out of. Her. You know what I'm saying? But it was a gamble. I could have very easily uh ruined attraction. Alright? Now, I'm very skilled, and so I kind of knew what to do, but I don't advocate you guys doing that. It's a very good chance if you do that. I don't even advocate seeing a girl two times in a week, nonetheless two times in a row. But I'm highly skilled. I figured I could pull it off, and then I did. You know what I'm saying? But I had a lot of things working for me, all right? And a lot of, a lot of skill on my part to pull that shit off, guys. But yeah, guys, it paid off. It was a gamble. guys. Anything that I tell you guys to do and you decide to do, it's that type of thing, you know, I tell you guys not to give a girl a compliment, validation and shit like that. Guys, guys been giving women compliments for hundreds of years and been fucking hoes to sleep. 
when I just tell you guys don't do it because I know it works better, all right? But you still can do it and you still can pull it off, all right? So anything I tell you to do, guys, guys have done it. Anything I have told you guys not to do, guys have done it and still fucked holes. I'm just letting you know that you run a risk of ruining attraction. Also, that's hypothetical to say even though you still fucked a bitch, that's hypothetical to say you still fucked the bitch. You still run the risk of her moving more into a masculine energy because you show her so much validation, all right? So if you're going to do that, understand you got to unvalidate it, all right? So I, on one hand, I validated you, and on the other hand, I'm going to unvalidate you, all right? So that's the thing. That's sort of like my video, Feed Them Scraps. You give it and you take it away, guys. But... Anything I tell you on my videos not to do, guys, and you do it, just understand it's still a risk. You still can fuck hoes. You know, if listen, you can talk you can talk to a girl on the phone every day and you still might fuck that bitch, right? It it has been done, guys. Guys have fucked women that they've talked on the phone to every day. I'm just letting you know that you run the risk of the woman losing attraction. Alright? That's the thing with that, guys. Alright. So right now. How I'm gonna do hers? I'm gonna pull back a little bit, a little bit. All right, I'm gonna pull back a little bit to unvalidate a little bit. I don't want a head to get too big. Like, oh, he saw me two days in a row. I'm the shit. So doing that now, I gotta pull back a little bit, guys. All right, guys. So just letting you know, guys. Anything you do when you compliment a girl or any kind of validation, you still can fuck that bitch. Just letting you know that it's a risk. All right, it's a risk. You need to know, just know the know the risk you're doing. All right, if you go rob a bank, you can get away with it, but it's a risk your ass go do 20 years in prison. All right, it's everything you do is a fucking risk, guys. All right, I'll talk to you guys later, man. What's up, fellas? Back again. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the validation point. So I took video of her last night and shit like that right there, and she saw me, and she saw me this morning taking video. And so I gave her that little validation too, but... You know, validation aside, here's my thing on that. As a dating coach, I think it's vital that I show proof of my results. All right? So even though even though it does validate the girls, the fact remains, man, as a dating coach, you have to show some type of proof to what you're doing. You, so, you know, you y'all got dating coaches on YouTube who ain't who been on YouTube five, six, seven years, ain't never showed you one goddamn woman. One. Ain't never showed you one fucking woman and want you to just believe what they say just for the hell of it. Just because, I guess, because they a man and got balls between my in between their legs. All right? And I believe that's completely bullshit. So even though it does give these girls validation when I film them and shit like this, that, and other, like filming the girl, she, she called me, she turned around and said, you filming me? And shit like that. That's fine. But the point being is, I just feel like as, as a dating coach, you know, y'all guys wouldn't take, you know, fitness advice from somebody who wasn't in shape. Y'all wouldn't take financial advice from somebody who didn't have their shit together. And why should y'all take dating advice from somebody who never showed y'all no fucking women? That shit is crazy to me. All right. And all they can sit, sit back and say is, oh, well, you know, this, the girls uh, like to be secret and all this shit. Man, that's a bunch of bullshit. I'm going to tell y'all why these guys don't never show y'all no women. They have women. They just look like shit. That's the bottom fucking line, guys. That's why they don't show y'all no women. I'm going to tell y'all why they can't show y'all no women. Because they put out videos about ain't nothing wrong with validating women and don't worry about, you know, you don't need money and, and, and you don't need to get in shape to get your, to pull no women. Yeah, them low scrubs that they fucking with. That's the bottom fucking line, guys. Because if you're going to fuck with bitches like that bitch I was with last night, you got to have your shit together. Man, let me tell y'all something about that girl I was with last night. I done went out I went out with that girl two times in a row. Don't y'all know girls didn't hit on that girl when I go and, like, I turn my back and go get us a drink or something. Don't y'all know I turn my back and be girls in her goddamn face trying to get her fucking number? That bitch bad, man. That bitch bad. You got to have your shit together to get that bitch. All right, that's the bottom fucking line. That girl bad. That girl stopped traffic every fucking where she go. When we pull up, everybody, all eyes on her. So you're going to have a lot of competition for that fucking girl. You got to have your shit together, man. That's the bottom fucking line, guys. And so when y'all listening to these dating coaches, 
and shit like this. And they tell y'all it's okay. You can give women compliments and you don't have to have your shit together to get women. No, you don't have to have your shit together to get women. But we ain't trying to fuck with sixes and sevens. The bad bitches, guys, the nines and tens that y'all want to fuck with, man, they get hit on by bad bitches. I took that bitch to the pool hall. I went to the bathroom. I come back. The fucking bartender over there trying to get her number. She said she gave the girl her Instagram. That's how bad the bitch is. I was with the bitch last night at the all-white party. Some other bad chick come up and snatch you up. Tell me something. Get up and dance. When you fucking with bitches that bad, you got to have your shit together. And so when the reason why y'all guys see my shit works is because I live this shit. A lot of these guys, man, are married to women that are like low-hanging fruit. And shit like this, that, and other. They trying to give out dating advice. But yet, they too ashamed to show you their wife and shit like that. And they don't want to show you no chicks. That's because they fucking frauds, guys. That's why I show y'all chicks. Even though it, I know I be like, man, this going to give that bitch too much validation. But in my eyes, it's just what I have to deal with. Because I have to show you guys proof of what I'm doing. I have to show you guys proof of I know what I'm talking about. I don't expect you guys just to take my word for it just because I make some videos and clap my hands and turn the camera on and y'all say, man, this guy good, but he ain't show no fucking women. So that's why even though it does validate y'all, validate these women to put them on camera like that, I just have to deal with it because in my eyes, I have to show proof of what I'm doing. And I advocate you guys to stop listening to dating coaches who don't never show no fucking proof unless listen if you just want some sevens and eight sixes and sevens listen to them but if you want to have bitches like the bitch i had last night that's gonna have bitches come hitting on her when you turn your back and shit you gotta you you better listen to me and you better do what the fuck i tell you to do all right guys i'll get back with you in a few